Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk to you about a job I've done over the last couple of weeks. Fixing this Acer all-in-one desktop and recovering some data. This is the kind of real world job I get all the time. Dave bought me this older all-in-one PC that was having some issues. It's a pretty decent PC considering it's probably 11 years old now. 3.2 GHz Core i3 processor, 4 GB of RAM would have been standard at the time, a 500 GB hard drive, an NVIDIA 315 graphics card, all packed in to a 21.5 inch monitor. But Dave said it was freezing up all the time. A quick look told me three things. The hard drive was dying, that was what was causing the lockups. It only had 4 GB of RAM and it was running Windows 10 32 bit. So even if it had more RAM, it wouldn't be able to use it. There's no way to convert a 32-bit version of Windows to a 64-bit version of Windows. You have to completely reinstall. But seeing as the machine needed a new hard drive, this seems like the perfect time to do it. After discussion with Dave, I ordered a one terabyte SSD and some extra RAM, and we started about rebuilding the machine. Getting inside wasn't the easiest. After removing the stand, there's no screws on the machine at all. So I had to take a spudger and work my way all the way around the machine, prying the case apart. The whole process that you're seeing here in about a minute took me nearly 15. Carefully edging in and around the plastic and unclipping it all the way. Once the plastic cover was off, it was time to brush off some of the dust, remove the covering panel and get a look inside. The graphics card was firmly supported by the bracket all around it and the slot that it was connected into, but it peeled out easily to reveal the hard drive underneath. The hard drive was on a bracket held in with rails and by a single screw. Once I removed the cables and the screw, I was able to remove the bracket and take out the hard drive. Unscrew the hard drive from the bracket and replace it with the new SSD. A two and a half inch SSD doesn't fit all that well into a three and a half inch drive bay, but it's so light, has no moving parts and the machine won't be moved around much so a single screw will hold it perfectly fine. I added an extra four gig of RAM and then blew all the dust out before reassembling the machine. A fresh install of Windows 10 64 bit and a dozen or so updates and the machine was nearly ready to go, except for the data. I put the old hard drive in one of my docks and connected it to one of my data recovery machines. There was a lot of data, including a folder of recovered data from 2016, probably from a different computer. The problem was, every now and again, the drive would hit a damaged patch and just stop. It wouldn't lock the machine up completely, but the copy would just stop. Sometimes you could get it going again by tapping the drive or turning it off and back on again. Sometimes for a minute, sometimes for a few hours. One of the issues with doing that is that the Windows copy process is not all that robust. I mean, it's a lot better than it used to be, but I've come to love a tiny little utility called Kill Copy. Its user interface is a little too small for my liking, but it does a great job of either copying or moving files and is more than happy to just skip all of the files that are already there in a way that the Windows copy utility just simply won't do, especially if there are files within folders, within folders, within folders. Doing this, I managed to get most of the files. In the pictures folder, I was able to copy nearly 49,000 of the 50,500 pictures and movies but I'm not happy with most. So it was time to break out another of my favorite utilities, Spinrite. This program deeply inspects every sector of the hard disk. And if it finds a damaged sector, it tries every trick in the book to read the data from it. I mean, this is seriously low level stuff. It will try moving the head a little to this side and slowly approaching it, a little to that side and slowly approaching it, anything it can do to read that data. And once it does read it, it moves it to a fresh sector of the disk and marks the original sector as bad and never to be used again. I gave it a run through at level two for data recovery. And in about two and a half hours, it had recovered data from three sectors and marked them bad and left me with a much better functioning drive. I was then able to recopy, thanks to Kill Copy, the remainder of the photos and documents that hadn't copied in the first place. I think in the end, I recovered everything other than about a dozen files, which works out to 99.999% recovery. Got to be pretty happy with that. The machine now runs much faster and hopefully Dave will be really happy to have it back in the next few days. Question of the day. 
Do you think you're ready to tackle a project like this? Why not? Give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Let me know in the comments down below, and if this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you very much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before, here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or to our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.